Hello friends, uh, my name is Adnan Kesar. Uh, you must have seen me earlier at YouTube as well. Um, I frequently uh, come off and on uh, with a few sessions uh, for your learning experiences. So today I want to share some thoughts with you on uh, sales. In that there would be a, a, a few things such as what exactly is sales? Mm, what are its, uh, its principles? and how can we apply sales in our uh, everyday life. We'll try to find out the requirements or prerequisites uh, for uh, to be a good salesperson. There would be some sales terminologies, uh, especially uh, which are uh, uh, quite common in the West, uh, but I have not come across in the, in the Eastern environment. So I'll also teach you uh, two popular, effective, and easy to use uh, sales techniques. And finally, I'll give you a trick uh, to get an appointment for cold calling. Uh, cold calling, as you may know, uh, is, is when you meet a person or uh, call him on the telephone uh, whom you do not know. Uh, so it's the first time that you are meeting or calling a person on the phone. So it's called cold calling. Uh, warm calling, on the other hand, is when you already have um, an acquaintance uh, with the other person and have some kind of an existing rapport uh, with that person. Most importantly, <clears throat> during the session, uh, you, you must take note as um, how I would advise you to break stranger barrier. Stranger barrier is our natural defense mode of our personalities, um, which we, we normally use to avoid getting being tricked or heard, or when we don't trust a stranger. So a salesperson obviously is someone uh, who is generally a stranger to you. So as a potential customer, uh, you tend to be a bit resistive to him, if not altogether indifferent. You distrust him, as in the back of your mind, uh, you have a feeling that the salesperson is going to fleece you or hoodwink you or tempt you through his flowery language um, and make you buy something which you do not need. Or maybe he would sell the product at an unreasonably high price. So for a good salesperson, um, winning a customer's confidence uh, is a must and for which uh, you need to break a stranger barrier. This breaking of a stranger barrier technique would be useful to you um, in, our, in your official as well as personal capacities, um, as well as when you meet with different people and relatives. People often ask me as to why I, I present my online sessions in English language. Uh, it's because of two things. When I think that my audience um, who are listening to this YouTube session have a fair understanding of English language and I further want to develop and build their concepts about English language, their vocabulary and their English language skills by introducing them new words and their meanings to them. These sessions are basically meant for those students um, who live in the far flung areas and do not have access to modern uh, concepts. Some of them come from a less privileged background, uh, which does not allow them to go to proper universities or colleges uh, and to get uh, proper education, formal education. Uh, so these uh, sessions uh, might be helpful for them. <clears throat> and I, I try to keep them as simple as possible. So these uh, small sessions, I try to pass on uh, the concepts and ideas uh, which I have learned in my life. Uh, remember my poem which I narrated to you um, when I gave the book review on Molana Jalaluddin Rumi uh, some time back. Uh, briefly it said, if you have not shared, you have not discovered. And if you have not given, you have not gained. I've always encouraged students and young people to improve and develop their English language uh, skills by listening to English language news, uh, especially uh, at least half an hour daily. So do pick up new words, go and find out their meanings and, and practice them in small sentences. 
so that you get comfortable, uh, the words get comfortable on your tongue and then you remember them for your lifetime. I would recommend you to listen to BBC News uh, every day um, as I think that uh, British English is, uh, is, is, remains the unvarnished English and the rest of the countries, the English which is spoken in other countries have their native dialects or accent um, which obviously is sometimes difficult to understand. The second purpose of my speaking in English language is uh, because the terminologies uh, which I use are generally you, uh, are, are in English language. So I do not want to hop between English and another language um, uh, which, which, which could be irritating sometimes. So finally, I very much encourage women and young student girls uh, to benefit from my lessons. Uh, so you guys need to excuse me if uh, I do not address uh, you people as she or her. So if I refer to he or him, it does not imply that I'm not addressing uh, the women gender. Uh, this is the age of gender equality and uh, women are our equal and able partners and part of our society. Uh, they are as intelligent as men could be and we must encourage them and support them uh, to come forward and contribute in our societies. Before I begin, um, uh, please be mindful that this uh, session could be lengthy. Uh, there are a couple of concepts which I'll be explaining. So I know that uh, sometimes a lengthy session becomes very monotonous. Although it breaks, if I break it into two parts, um, it will break the rhythm as well as the flow. Uh, but uh, I do not know. I think it would be difficult for me to upload it on the YouTube, a lengthy session. So maybe uh, at a stage I have kept my, my, my time with me. Um, maybe I need to, to divide this session into two parts. So you're most welcome uh, to, to listen uh, to it at leisure and you can pause it, take notes if you, if you, if you desire. I'm sure this, this uh, session is going to be uh, value of, of some value to you. So what is sales? Um, let's see what sales is. But before we begin, let me clarify one thing that I am not a salesperson. <laughs> I am not a professional salesperson. Um, you know, I, I, I sometimes I write on geopolitics uh, and uh, uh, geopolitical affairs and occasionally compose an Urdu poem and uh, Urdu ghazal and nazam which you listen to it at Ek Nazm Aap Ki Bazm. So that is my amateur poetry. So although I've studied sales and marketing in my business studies, um, I have practiced sales uh, in very little. But what I'm going to teach you today uh, comes from my own personal experiences. As sales has given me an edge, um, which I employ during my interaction with people in my daily life, as I come across uh, assorted uh, people from diverse cultural backgrounds. So when somebody asks me, so Mr. Kesser, what is your forte? Uh, so I say relationship management. I'm good at building stronger and trustworthy relations. And I am, I'm going to share my own experiences with you today, um, which have um, contributed a little bit uh, to whatever success I could gain in my life. So when I was a little boy, <clears throat> my father used to narrate a story about, uh, about a person who used to always walk uh, with a bag of tools over his uh, shoulders. So people used to ask him, what do you do with these tools? So he used to reply, I make friends with these things. So people used to be used to be uh, uh, used to question him. Um, how can you make friends with these tools? So he used to say that you know um, uh, I help people. Uh, somebody needs a plumbing job. Somebody's uh, water tap is is uh, dripping. Uh, somebody's roof is dripping. Uh, so I fix that. Somebody needs a woodwork. Um, so I fix that. And by doing this, I help people. And in return, I make them my friends. So try to understand that a salesperson should also consider himself or herself as helping out their customers. 
as you meet their needs and provide them the product which satisfies their need. Please hold on to this word need as I will be referring it um, uh, times and again um, to, to explain this concept to you. Mind you, we all carry out sales in our personal capacities in our daily, day, daily, daily lives. Um, although we are not uh, professional salespeople, uh, but you don't need to be a sales agent or a professional salesperson to, to, to sell something. Remember, sales is generally viewed as a sale of a product or a service or a commodity, uh, uh, which gets you cash for kind in return. Uh, kind is like a barter system, uh, which I'm going to explain to you in a minute. But to me, sales is, um, is a very, very vast concept. It's a huge subject. Sales also happen in our personal interaction uh, with, with people as well in our uh, everyday life. Um, so many a times you don't get a dollar amount in return um, after selling something or giving something to a, another person. Uh, this concept is a little delicate but important to understand. Uh, you see, when you extend a favor uh, or carry out uh, somebody's help in some way, or you show an affection to, to, to another person, you are actually carrying out sales <clears throat> because you are giving out something to another person. What you get in return is uh, not a dollar amount, uh, but you get a sense of accomplishment. You get a sense of pride and a sense of personal fulfillment. You also get a feeling of satisfaction and a contentment of heart. It is similar to the barter trade of the olden times uh, when people used to uh, receive a product or a commodity in exchange uh, for selling something. For instance, if you had sold wheat to somebody, you would get rice uh, back in return uh, without involving any currency transaction in between. So please open up your horizon um, and start applying the, the concept of sales um, and notions and ideas in your daily, daily, daily life. That brings us uh, to the first um, lesson, uh, which is what are the prerequisites or requirements to be a good or a great salesperson? So first of all is the product knowledge. The first principle about selling is to know the ins and outs of your product. <clears throat> Remember, it is said that you can only break the rules if you know the rules. <laughs> and even if I do not want you to break the rules, uh, which you must never in any case, uh, you can certainly find, find out a loophole to circumvent or bypass the rules and regulations. So knowing your product is, uh, is a must. My new technology these days is, um, is advancing at a very rapid pace. You need to keep learning about the new innovations, new tools and skills, especially the latest products in the market, their features and their updates. So second prerequisite is patience. While you would come across decent and sober people uh, most of the time, at times you come across horrible and, and cranky people who would spoil your whole day. They will come very day, very late uh, in the day uh, to your store and when you are already planning to close down and uh, go home. Uh, they will also ask you pretty annoying questions at times. Uh, they will also pester you for unreasonable discount or they will bargain uh, the price with you. But the trick is not to lose your patience, not to lose your cool. Um, take it as a, as a human learning experience. Most importantly, you must understand that the customer walking into your store is actually a cash amount, which you must never allow uh, to walk out of the store without a product. Uh, we'll discuss it later during our discussion uh, on actual sale. Um, as you will be coming across um, uh, several times hesitant or indecisive customers, they will be having weak personalities to make a decision to make a purchase. 
and there um, your role will come to intervene and help them to make a decision and buy a product. Uh, the moment you intervene, um, you will be doing two things. Uh, one, you need to reassure them, your customer, uh, that what they are doing is the right decision. Secondly, you have to show and demonstrate that you have a genuine uh, interest of that customer at heart. This is most needed in winning the customer's confidence. Um, he or she needs to have a faith and trust in you as well as in your product. So handling irritating and annoying customer is not difficult uh, if you stay persistent and patient. Third is your language skills. While we all know how to talk, what is important is to know what to talk and how much to talk. You must have come across salespeople who are extremely talkative and annoying. That is their biggest mistake. You should talk only what is needed to be said. Uh, and especially you should speak only when it is the appropriate time to speak. Uh, remember the proverb, it says, the more you speak, the more you commit mistakes. Because by excessively speaking, you not only put off the other person, but you also divulge uh, a lot of unnecessary information to them, which may be detrimental or harmful um, to you as a salesperson or as an individual. So always measure your words and speak only what is required to be said. Fourth is a prerequisite is to be a good listener. This is the continuation of uh, point number three. Uh, when you speak less and listen more, uh, you can see the nature has given us one mouth and two ears um, because <laughs> nature also wants us to speak less and listen more. Have you ever noticed that when you go to a barber shop uh, for a haircut um, or the, the ladies go to a spa or a beauty saloon or a beauty parlor, what is the most significant thing the hairdresser or that beauty service provider does to you? Think about it for a moment. They not only provide you with the, with the desired service, but they also make you talk by asking simple, innocent question, um, such as, so how's your day? Normal. And you begin talking like a parrot for the rest of the service, uh, uh, service time. You would not notice that the hairdresser or the beauty service provider, after asking this question, uh, uh, quietly concentrate on their work uh, without paying much attention to you. Uh, because all they have made you is to speak. And when you speak, you unburden yourself. So after you leave, um, after you are done with the service, you feel refreshed and uh, reinvigorated um, and vibrant uh, because you have um, uh, you've spoken all the unnecessary things to, to them. Same thing applies to a salesperson or a compassionate human being. They listen attentively. Two things happen when you listen attentively. One, the other person gets comfortable with you, begins to trust you. Secondly, you get your desired information. So the fifth prerequisite for being a great salesperson is that you must be aware of cultural sensibilities and sensitivities. It's a very, very delicate point. So please concentrate to, to understand that. You will come across um, customers from assorted cultural backgrounds. Some of them may not be speaking your own language. So, and some of their practices will be unfamiliar to you. Secondly, they will be behaving in a peculiar style according to their customs and traditions. As a salesperson, you're not only expected to adjust to your customers, 
and address their need accordingly. Um, just to give you an example, um, um, in the West, in the Western culture, um, it is preferred that when you are dealing with another person, you look, you look into the eyes of the other person. Um, this is a sign of uh, you being honest, straightforward, and trustworthy to, the, to them. However, in the Eastern culture, you must have noticed that staring into the eyes of another person um, is considered rude or offensive or impolite. Um, so, uh, all the, another aspect, aspect I wish to highlight about cultural practices um, is about fixed price and uh, and negotiation nego and, and, and bargaining skill uh, space. So um, it is important to understand uh, the difference between the West and the East, an uh, Eastern environment in which the sales are conducted. So in the West, we normally have um, a fixed price. So the customers, uh, they shop around, they find their desired product and wherever they get a better price, they go. However, in the Eastern environment, it is important to understand that each and every, almost each and every customer would try to bargain with you about the price. Uh, you may find it pestering, uh, irritating at times, but try to understand that this is this is a common uh, practice or a, or a cultural practice of, of the Eastern people. Uh, it's altogether a different uh, discussion as to what are the societal uh, norms and practices and factors which make um, uh, uh, a customer from Eastern background uh, haggle with you uh, for getting a reduced price. But you have to give that space to the customer by bargaining with him, uh, letting him bargain with you about the price. Uh, this could be called as a customer's leverage. Uh, it could be called shopper's maneuverability space. So the customer should feel adequate space of, of, of negotiating with you about the price. Uh, because at the end of the day, when the customer goes back with the product, he or she should feel elated and satisfied that she has got a better deal. Uh, a better price from you. So although you may not have um, um, have compromised on your profits, but again, this feeling of satisfaction is extremely important uh, for a customer uh, when, uh, when they buy some products from you. Uh, let me share an incident um, about, uh, it's not part of this discussion, but, but just for your, uh, just for your knowledge and understanding. Uh, the, the, the fine point of the cultural sensibilities and how it is important for you to understand um, uh, the finer points of, uh, of how people behave. So uh, since I have been involved in project management as well, uh, there has been a, um, a project uh, in one of the villages in, in the remote part of the country um, where the where water was not available uh, to the inhabitants, uh, so the women of that village uh, they had to climb to a nearby hill. Uh, there there used to be a spring, and they used to walk over to the hill to fetch water every day. So it was fairly cumbersome uh, exercise every day to go climb up the hill, bring water down for their everyday needs. Uh, so the project was designed in a fashion that why not uh, this water could be brought down to their village and made available to them, uh, made common sense. Uh, 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 but somehow or the other, when the project was uh, was finished, was uh, installed, uh, when a review inspection was carried out, it was found that all the taps or the faucets were broken. Very surprising. How could all the taps could be broken of those pipes uh, which were bringing water from the spring. So uh, it was thought at that time uh, that could be um, improper use uh, of the taps which could have uh, led to their uh, um, breaking down. 
But after a while, again, the taps and the faucets were, were, were broken. So then uh, the people who were responsible for carrying out project evaluation, they had to dig deep uh, to understand what was behind this, uh, this uh, vandalism. So it was found that the women, it was the women of the area of that village, they used to deliberately break the taps. They didn't want the project to succeed. Very surprising, very strange. Why? It was a project for their own convenience. Uh, it saved them from walking over to the hill, uh, go to the spring and fetch water. The water was made available to them right at their doorstep. But they intentionally broke the taps. So when it was found that, you know, that the time when those women of the area used to walk over to the hill, to that spring, it was their private, personal, social time. So they used to interact together. Uh, they used to discuss their personal affairs. And um, uh, so it was like um, their time away from their from the males of the society and uh, just a just a women 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 time so they so that, that got compromised somehow because the water was made available to them so they didn't like uh, the project and they they said so so alternate arrangements had to be done for that uh, for the project to succeed but try to understand that you have to dig deep into the behavior pattern of different people when you are interacting with them so coming back to the prerequisites of sales uh, so the sixth point is um, is to be cognizant of or aware of uh, the space between you and your customer this is applicable um, when we are interacting with uh, people in our uh, everyday life as well uh, to maintain a specific distance uh, while we are communicating with the other person. In different societies of the world, depending upon their population and, and their culture, there are fixed um, demarcated uh, spaces which you have to maintain while talking to the other person. So too, too close with the other person, uh, it, is, it is considered as, as you are intimidating or harassing the other person. And if you are too far away or too distant, uh, that would show that you are too indifferent, you are aloof, and you are too detached from the other person. So both these things uh, are not uh, 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 suggestive. Um, so mind your space. Uh, it's, it's very important. If as a salesperson, you have to come close to, a, to your customer to show him or her a product, uh, step back immediately and maintain your distance after uh, showing the project, the product. <clears throat> um, maintaining the distance or the space is equally important because you need to hear uh, your customer properly. Uh, obviously, when you are in a store environment, uh, there are uh, background noises. So you need to hear your customer properly and you need to communicate your, your product knowledge or uh, suggestions. Uh, to your customers as well. So the audible distance uh, as well as the cultural distance is very, very important. Seventh is uh, is product touch. Again, a very, very delicate subject. The, remember when we go out to buy a product, um, we are dying to touch it. Um, beautiful packaging and a new product with the, sometimes it has a, it has a, it has a strange smell as well. So it gives us a very, very great feeling. Um, uh, think of yourself as a child when you always used to get a, a new toy. So it used to give you a very, very vibrant feeling, um, a great, great sense. So the same thing happens to your customer as well. They would like to touch the product and feel it, touch it and feel it with their own hands. So. Mark my words, if the customer is finding it exhilarating and pleasurable while touching the product, he or she would definitely go and buy that product. However, um, you have to be aware and you have to follow your company's policies uh, about 
letting the customer touch the product because in some of the environments customers are not allowed to uh, to to touch a, a specific product before it is being bought uh, although um, i discourage it uh, it is not a healthy practice uh, but in some of the companies um, they do follow such practice i uh, let me give you um, an example um, i remember reading it in the newspaper um, several years ago about once uh, once a customer from a developing country uh, went to dubai um, uh, and at that time uh, the digital cameras were newly introduced and obviously uh, they were very expensive and um, uh, they were very desirable too uh, but they were very high quality and expensive so um, once uh, the gentleman went to a shop and uh, he wanted to have a closer look of the camera a digital camera he wanted to hold it in his own hands so the shopkeeper um, in that uh, Middle Eastern country <clears throat> snubbed him and shooed him away um, that people of such and such country um, are not allowed to touch it uh, before before paying the price. Uh, you may find it strange, uh, but sometimes it happens. So the gentleman uh, coolly asked uh, for the price of the camera. So the shopkeeper said it's uh, 2000 US dollars. Um, a very expensive uh, price. So the man took out $2,000 uh, from his wallet and paid to the shopkeeper and said, and said uh, may I now um, hold the camera and see it? So the shopkeeper gave him the camera. So the gentleman th threw the camera down on the floor and smashed it with his shoe, uh, broke it totally apart. And uh, and then again, he took out $2,000 from his wallet and he said, now give me another camera. So try to understand. It's again culture. It's again um, uh, the, the product touch, which is very important. So you have to be sensitive to your to your customer uh, preferences and, and, and demands. So it's 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 very important to to give um, value to your customer's sentiments and their sensitivities. Let them touch the product. Um, if your company allows it, um, I'm sure it's going to get you a, your desired sale. Human element. Uh, this is the eighth and uh, the last point of uh, sales prerequisite. Um, um, as you see that all these factors which I have mentioned are applicable in our everyday life as well um, when you meet and interact with different people. So the same principles you keep applying. So they are not specific only to sales. So among these factors, having a compassionate human touch is extremely important. Uh, this is a delicate subject. Um, so people try, so 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 please try to understand it and 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 employ it uh, according to your company's policies uh, as well as your personal priorities and uh, your consideration sales is said to be a heartless uh, and insensitive profession all you are interested uh, concerned about the sales target sales volume business and revenue generation repeat business and profitability but then, as you come across customers from assorted backgrounds, um, they will have um, diversified financial and social backgrounds. So you have a um, ethical and moral um, responsibility too towards them. <clears throat> that responsibility uh, is to get them the right product which falls into their appropriate budget. So, although the business or work ethics call upon you to, to sell the priciest and most expensive thing to your customers in large numbers, uh, that swells the company's bottom line. Uh, bottom line is actually uh, an account sheet in which your company's assets and liabilities are mentioned. Assets are the capital assets, uh, like business property and office infrastructure, and supplies and liabilities are the amount of the debt or the loan 
uh, that company has to pay. <clears throat> that account sheet also carries uh, revenues or the income of that company as well as the expenditures of your enterprise, uh, like staff salaries and utility bills, etc. And the bottom there is a line under which after carrying out the necessary additions and subtractions, there is a number that is called as the bottom line. It speaks about the profit of that company. So the bottom line calls for higher profits all, always and every time. But I will teach you subsequently that you don't need to sell the most expensive product to your customer. You need to give the most appropriate product to your customer. Um, if a customer comes from a modest background, don't show him um, an iPhone 10 or top of the line product. Um, understand that he may be, his budget would be limited. So address his need according to his budget. Uh, so maybe um, an Android phone would work as good as um, as anything to meet the customer's need. <clears throat> and if you begin showing the customer an iPhone 10 or the top of the line mobile phone straight away, you would not only break uh, the heart of that customer, but you may also make him feel miserable and poor. Eventually, uh, what will happen is uh, that the customer will lose uh, his interest or his heart in buying the product and may leave empty-handed uh, and you may lose the sale. I recall having a, a personal experience several years ago in which I had a chance to, to overhear um, or in, and watch a sales conversation when a lady along with her teenage daughter uh, came to a flashy store, electronic store, to buy a digital camera. <clears throat> As I mentioned in or, um, a few years ago, digital cameras were very popular. They are not now, but in those days when they were newly introduced, uh, they were very popular and uh, everyone wanted to have one. So the salesman was performing cross-selling, uh, a term which I will, I'm going to discuss later. But at that time, just because of, uh, of $25, um, um, for which uh, a micro SD card for storage uh, purposes was needed additionally uh, to buying the digital camera, the sales could not materialize. So what turned out eventually is that the mother had a specific number of, uh, of, of money uh, to buy their digital camera. So she had not anticipated or she did not have those additional $25 to buy that storage card, micro SD card. Um, and I remember the pain, the, the discomfort and the disappointment uh, in the eyes of that teenage girl at that time, uh, because uh, she might have come with a lot of excitement, um, hope and expectations to buy a camera that day. Unfortunately, she couldn't just because of a $25 micro SD card. So, because I thought that maybe it is needed for her high school project, or it could be her friend's uh, birthday event. Um, but the salesperson's insensitivity, insensibility, and lack of discretion, especially his poor timings, in informing the need of having a micro SD card for $25, is needed for uh, for the digital camera as well. So that caused a lot of despair to that young girl. I remember I had a, I, I had a strong urge in me, uh, arousing in me at that time, to step forward and pay that $25 uh, on their behalf uh, because it was getting a very, very awkward and very uh, embarrassing situation. Uh, but at that time, the culture uh, didn't allow me to do so. And I still live with, uh, with those regrets uh, as those two young disappointing eyes uh, keep haunting me. And that is why I strongly urge you to maintain that, to, to always consider that sensibility in you, to respect the financial background of your customer 
and sell appropriate product and inform them accordingly uh, about about the price and the price package uh, price package of, of of a certain product which they want so it's important to be sensitive and compassionate towards your customer and this is what is my point to be genuine and sincere towards your customer so let's now discuss about um, uh, some sales te te terminologies uh, I know um, I have uh, <clears throat> reached uh, half an hour, uh, so I don't want it to be boring for you. Uh, so let's uh, discuss the sales terminologies and the other parts of the, in the second session. So ladies and gentlemen, this is part one uh, ending. This is Adnan Kesar. We'll continue um, with the second part in due course. Thank you very much.